There is no doubt left that video games are becoming a dominant form of entertainment that stands toe to toe with giants such as the music and film industry. Video games are not niche anymore. They are for everyone and they're just going to get more and more popular. So when it comes to the question of whether video games are a legitimate form of entertainment, there's no question anymore. The question is now of whether video games can be an art. Specifically whether they can have any artistic merit is still a somewhat open discussion. Now I have to be clear about how the word art is being used here. There are quite a few meanings to the word and when most people think of art, they think of products of artistry. When you drew something in kindergarten, it could rightly be called art in a sense that it required some artistry to create it. On that level, games are undeniably art. They are a product of colossal artistic collaborations the same way that films are. There are artists of every type that work to create video games just as they do with films. This includes sculptors, painters, writers, musicians, and many more. But it stands to reason that because something is a creative product of an artist, this doesn't make it an art, in the sense that people who say games can't be art are using it. After all, we don't consider every movie to have artistic merit or to be art. That's why we have so-called art films as a separate category of film, because they have qualities that stand apart from film as a whole. I hope at this point it's obvious that I'm trying to draw a distinction between artistry, which is the technical ability of an artist to produce creative products for various purposes, and art as a phenomenon. The main difference between a Hollywood blockbuster and an art film is the intention behind their creation. Art films are made mainly to be appreciated on an aesthetic level, or to let the artist say something using dense symbolism or many layers of meaning. It's confusing because a Hollywood blockbuster can do these things, but it does not exist for the sake of aesthetics as its main reason for being. One of the biggest issues is how can a game be art if a game is not built around aesthetics or deep symbolism? Like art, a game exists for its own sake, but that's where the comparison ends. Let's take Journey, a PS3 and now PS4 title as an example. I don't think anyone could strongly argue that Journey is not art. It hits our main criteria well. It's made mainly to be appreciated on an aesthetic level, and it has multiple layers of meaning, fairly deep symbolism, and a strong artistic message. But is it a game? I would argue that Journey is not in fact a game, but a piece of art that's both digital and interactive. On the surface, it resembles a game, but there's a couple of reasons it doesn't quite fit that category. At best, Journey is an artistic puzzle box, but since there is no real loss condition, there's no real game rules and so on. I think my most charitable position regarding Journey would be to see it as a edge case teetering between the bare bones required to be a game and being something else. So finally, months later, I finally played and finished the five main endings of Nier Automata, while picking up a handful of less serious endings on the way. After putting just over 40 hours into the game, I came to the conclusion that this game is finally the one that makes the strongest argument that a game can also be art. By this, I mean that Nier Automata is fully and truly a video game, and it is fully and truly an art in the sense that I described before. I don't think that I need to argue much of a case that Nier Automata is a proper video game, from its platinum perfect combat to the RPG chip system and the multi-genre spanning gameplay. Nier Automata is practically several games in one. I will now, however, try to make an argument that this game is truly art at the same time. I never quite realized how beautiful this world is. The commanders put me in charge of your maintenance, ma'am. That means I'll be performing regular checks on you from now on. If anyone is listening to this, there's something I need you to do. If you ever meet up with Yorha Unit 9S, I want him. I mean.
we're not so different after all. Pod 153, I order you to halt all logical thought and speech. They're not A2! I can handle this! Androids were designed to protect their human masters. Even if it's pointless, you still have to do it! You two are the last I... remaining members of your heart. I... That's not the operator. It's... Aesthetics is central to Nier Automata. As you play the game, it's clear that whenever director Yoko Taro had to make a choice between aesthetics and other considerations, aesthetics won the day. Giant trees, steampunk alien robots, and androids wearing Harujuku fashion with military visors that are identical to velvet blindfolds. This is all done with as little explanation as Salvador Dali had to give for his melting clocks in his painting Persistence of Memory. In a game like Dragon Age or Mass Effect, concessions would be made to suspension of disbelief and the appearance of plausible reality, even in a fantasy setting. Taro makes no such concessions. The visuals you see here is the deliberate intention of an amateur with something to say. Which brings up an interesting point. When Yoko Taro was asked in an interview why the character 2B looked the way that she did, he just simply replied, I just like girls. This is a refreshing and widely applauded response in a world where artists apparently have to justify their choices as if there are some sort of fascist government bureau which had to approve their art according to some external standard. But at the same time, I'm kind of convinced this is just another example of Taro playing with us again. The Yorha androids are all beautiful and perfect dolls. Other androids in the game are not built to be such perfect and angelic specimens. Now, I don't want this video to spoil it for anyone who hasn't played this game, but if you have finished Automata, think about what Yorha's purpose is and how the very specific aesthetics of 2B and 9S fit into that. Think of what A2 represents and how her hair and body reinforces that theme. The other key part of qualifying Nier Automata as art has to do with its emotional effects. Nier Automata is not a game made to speak to your brain, but to speak to your heart. Everything in this game is calculated to evoke emotion in the player. When you play it next or play it for the first time, pay attention to even the little things. When the game subtly takes a moment every now and then to thread an emotional message, you can feel it in your heart rate and your breathing. The music and aesthetics reinforces the emotional rhythm of the game expertly, enough to leave you exhausted at the end of a play session, and yet feelings about the game linger like an after image even when you're doing something else. The final aspect of this game that qualifies it as art to me is also the one I think will divide opinions the most. Truly great art evokes the transcendent aspects of the human experience. When you stand in a museum and you look at a work of art, you may feel something that could only be described as a spiritual experience. The artwork speaks to you on a level that's more than intellectual and more than emotional. It's an ineffable quality of the transcendent that separates truly great art from everything else. Nier Automata is probably one of the first games that I've played which truly evokes the transcendent. The sense that there's just so much more to this than what I see and hear. More importantly, I strongly feel the message that Yoko Taro wanted to share. But whether I hear it as intended is another question. But that I do hear it is something I can't doubt. So